for a closer look, we can bring in Jeremy Surrey. He's history professor at the University of Texas at Austin and the author of Henry Kissinger and the American Century. Jeremy, thanks so much for taking the time to join us here. Here's a man who has not held an official government position for quite some time now. He still holds a, in, in a very important place in U.S. politics. Why is that and how? Well, there are very few figures in the United States who take on the intellectual heft of Henry Kissinger. He brings policy experience with uh, an incredible oeuvre of writing, books, articles. No one has written more on these issues than he has. So he's established himself as the oracle, as the wise man in our society, and people who are Democrats and Republicans want to identify with him if they want to be seen as serious foreign policy thinkers. So your, your biography of Kissinger examines his background as a German Jewish immigrant to the U.S. and how that informed his particular uh, brand of realpolitik. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So Henry Kissinger is part of a very large number of immigrants who come to the United States fleeing the Nazis in the 1930s and 40s. And they change American society because they bring with them ideas from Europe that were not common in the United States, realpolitik being one of them. The belief that the United States must put power above democracy and that we must build alliances around the world. Before World War II, the United States had not been in an alliance since the 18th century when we allied with France against Britain. For 150 years, the American leadership rejected alliances. Kissinger brought to the United States a perspective that other German Jews and other immigrants had, that the United States had to be involved in the world, it had to use military force, and it had to combat fascism and communism. And that changed everything in American foreign policy. Uh, indeed. And maybe this was just when I started to pay attention, but it feels like it was around the early 2000s when Kissinger's legacy really began to come under uh, some heavy scrutiny. He's he's really got this sort of a villain uh, figure among many on the left, human rights campaigners, a feeling that he's sort of managed to escape uh, any accountability for really horrible events around the world that he had a hand in. How is that? Well, there are two phases in the criticisms of Kissinger, and many of these criticisms have a lot of weight and legitimacy to them. The first set are during the Vietnam War in the late 1960s and 1970s, during the bombing of Cambodia. Uh, a generation of 60s activists, Soissons uh, Wieters, uh, really see Kissinger as one of the chief villains. Those perspectives are forgotten with the end of the Cold War, but then in the early 21st century with a new emphasis upon human rights, human rights activists look to Kissinger as a villain, as someone whose realpolitik questions whether there should be international law and war crimes. And so he becomes a focus for those who really believe we need to create new precedents and a new way of conducting foreign policy. They see him as the old school when they're trying to create a new school of human rights. That said, as we've already touched upon, he's remained this towering figure, uh, especially among uh, the mainstream Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton cited him as, as, a, as a major influence and a friend, I, I believe. Uh, he's 100 years old now, obviously. Uh, is there, d does, he, does he maintain this influence? Is there a future for him in, say, the foreign policies of a Biden administration, part two, or, or, or elsewhere? Well, as I'm sure many of your watchers know, uh, he's been quite vocal on the war in Ukraine, arguing that the United States and its Western allies should negotiate with Russia, but also that Ukraine now should be part of NATO. He's still a very influential figure. And if you are someone like President Biden or President Macron, you don't want to be seen as on the other side of Henry Kissinger because he still carries a lot of prestige. At the same time, as a 100-year-old, he's not involved in day-to-day -day policy. He's much more a figure, a touch a prophet that people want to be associated with. And the curious thing is that the criticisms of him from human rights activists only make his prestige even more important, because he's seen as the realpolitik master, and a president like Biden or Macron wants to be seen as a master of realpolitik. So they want to be seen with Henry Kissinger. All right. Towering figure of the 20th century uh, and beyond. Thanks very much. Uh, Jeremy Suri, uh, history professor, University of Texas, Austin, the author of Henry Kissinger and the American uh, Century. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.